Greetings, everyone, and welcome to True Fire Live. We've got, well, you can see who we've got, Robin Ford in the house. Uh, this is someone that really needs no introduction. But for those of you that are hearing, watching Robin for the first time, he was named one of the 100 greatest guitarists of the 20th century by Musician Magazine. He was the recipient of Guitar Player Magazine's Lifetime Achievement Legend Award, five-time Grammy nominee, prolific composer, incredible songwriter, producer, and a very passionate educator. He's played with a variable who's who's list of artists. Joni Mitchell, Jimmy Witherspoon, Miles Davis, George Harrison, Larry Carlton, Bob Dylan, John Mayle, Greg Almond, Schofield, the list goes on and on and on. Robin's here filming two more projects. Uh, I think we've got about 12 in the can already. Uh, both of them are in uh, training solace formats, one on up-tempo blues and the other on a more moody, slow, and mid-tempo blues. Let's see if we can get Robin to play a little bit more and then we'll start talking about it. It was almost sacrilegious to be talking over all of that awesome guitar <laughs> That was my work. best part. But I have to do that, okay? <laughs> it's like in the contract here. Quite all right. Um, uh, I, I'm really excited to have you back again. This is, I think, this is the 13th or 14th project we're doing together. Wow. I mean, I don't even know if you're aware, but look at all these things we've done from Blues Revolution, <laughs> Chord Revolution, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've explored the diminished scale. You have a pretty outstanding library here, and uh, you're very passionate about education, aren't you? Well, you know, uh, once I open my mouth and start talking about it, <laughs> it's hard to close it because <laughs> uh, it's just uh, wonderful to share, quite honestly. It's like it's, it's a way of, of sharing with people, you know, like what you spend your life doing. Yeah. So it's it's as much for me as it is for you know wanting to pass it along. It's just like you know I I just uh, take a lot of pleasure in sharing. Well, you you are very very generous mm -hmm. and uh, thank um, you. you know you've lifted the hood on a lot of let's call it the very uh, signature distinctive Robin Ford guitaristics, if you will. And, uh -huh. you know, a lot of folks, um, a lot of other artists maybe aren't as comfortable about doing that. Uh -huh. um, but, uh, you know, I can tell you we very much appreciate it. And I can tell you our, you know, our students very much appreciate it, as do, you know, um, you've got folks right now from all over the world. Let me tell you who's chiming in already. France, Denver, New York City, Mexico City, Toronto, Sweden, France, Germany, England, Ukraine, Greece, Brazil, hey. Transylvania, okay? Transylvania? Uh, Poland, Madrid, California, Switzerland. We're very close. We're waiting for, there's a cat in Antarctica that tunes into these things. Uh -huh. And then we'll have all the continents covered very quickly. So uh -huh. um, you've, you've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of fans out there, and they've got a lot of questions for you. But let's start by talking about the two projects we're doing here mm -hmm. You know, this week. They're both in a trading solos format. And comping. And comping. And so you know, you've brought in 10 killer tracks uh, recorded live, I think, in Nashville, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, one set of tracks is up-tempo blues. Mm -hmm. 
So that's one of the trading solos. And the other trading solos is on, um, you call it moody blues, basically, yeah. slow and mid-tempo blues, right? Yeah. And on each of these things, you're, you're going to take the track, you're going to comp over it, mm -hmm. then you're going to solo over your comping. Mm -hmm. And we do the magic in the back here and, you know, set it up so that uh, students can kind of trade solos and trade comping with you. Yeah. Um, if you would talk for just a minute about, we talked yesterday about you know, why you felt jamming and getting with other musicians was important. Can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, um, it is uh, probably the quickest way to learn is to play with other people. Um, working by yourself on things, you know, uh, you can hone things, you know, on your own. But time spent working with others is where you can potentially, I should say, you know, learn the most. And, um, uh, you know, like uh, John Coltrane and Wayne Shorter used to get together and play together. One would play the horn, the other would play the piano, and then they'd switch. Mm -hmm. And these are two of the greatest giants in j history of jazz, mm -hmm. you know. Maybe the two, other than Sonny Rollins, greatest <laughs> giants on the tenor saxophone, yeah. uh, certainly in modern jazz. And uh, Benny Golson and John Coltrane, when they were kids, you know, used to play together. Coltrane was still playing the alto, and he was in high school, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I always rehearsed with a band. That was kind of how I worked. Was, uh, I, always, I was always writing, and I would get together with a group. And we would do this daily, you know. And Russell Ferrante was opposite me, and that's the guy that I was learning from. Mm. He and I had a, a very strong exchange. Uh-huh. Uh, the piano and guitar. Yeah. And I was also playing tenor in those days. But, um, yeah, trading, going back and forth, see what other people are doing, you know. Uh, th this is really where, you know, your mind kind of expands, you know. And then you can take it home and work on it. Cool. Let's, uh, let's take a track from maybe the up-tempo mm -hmm. set. Sure. And kind of show them how we're approaching that. Cool. All righty. Uh, Tommy, what do you what do you have in there for us to do? Let's just take a look at Blue Highway first. Cool. Okay. Uh, if you could, uh, how about comping over this? Is that just bass and drums, right? Yeah. Okay. All righty. Comp. I'm comping. All righty. <laughs> Sorry. Can we try it again? <laughs> or should I just dive in? No, nah, Joe. Sorry about that, folks. No problem. Go ahead. Can we turn that up? I can't hear it. The uh, backing tracks? Yeah. Okay. He's got it. Um, 
you know, we've had, you know, countless discussions over the course of all the sessions we've done together about your love of chords, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the Mickey Baker book. D talk about that a little bit, you know. The Mickey Baker book? or Well, uh, you talk about the love of your chords and, and okay. how you kind of develop that love. Well, um, some may have heard me say, as I have in some of my courses, I've had to mention that I remember being on a bandstand when I was 19, playing a show and realizing that I didn't know any chords. <laughs> 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 you know, I knew the basic, what I always like to call affectionately cowboy chords. Uh -huh. But uh, the only chord beyond that that I knew was a, a ninth chord, you know, maybe a major seventh. Mm -hmm. And when are you going to use a major <laughs> seventh chord? <laughs> right. In the blues. Yeah. So uh, I got a book, uh, the Mickey Baker Jazz Volume 1, which is a brilliant book, man. His whole series is, is good stuff. And basically my patterning, uh, I've patterned my, uh, you know, teaching uh, s kind of along those lines, you know. And um, uh, it, it was not difficult to learn a lot of chord voicings fairly quickly for me. And I don't think it should be that hard for most people. It's really just applying yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was taking, you know, what uh, was being taught in a, an older style, traditional jazz style of playing and just taking those chords and down to my Chicago blues gig with, I was playing with Charlie Musselwhite at the time. Mm -hmm and um, applying them very directly, and it fit perfectly. So uh, chord knowledge worked within a traditional blues setting just very naturally, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was able to use these things in the simplest of chords of, uh, of musical settings, uh, where not only was it um, funky and soulful, you know, but could be as sophisticated uh, as uh, any jazz music, you know? Cool. And, uh, you know, you we did one project here, uh, Chord Revolution, I think, where you kind of show, mm -hmm. you know, you show your chord vocabulary. Yeah. You know, I inspired, you know, from the Mickey Baker book, yeah. many of them. Mm -hmm. um, I know that many of us here ran out and got that Mickey Baker book after yeah. you first mentioned it. Uh -huh. And you've mentioned it a couple of times more. I have a feeling... Um, that book has sold lots of copies, and it so has. in a way, that's a nice <laughs> payback to Mickey Baker, right? It is. <laughs> it's. Uh, I feel like I, you know, it's an homage, you know, a bit Absolutely. of an homage. Absolutely. Um, okay, so we did comping. So for the trading solos, that that's from the up tempo blues edition, mm -hmm. and then um, you solo over that comped version. Yeah. Okay. Would uh -huh. you mind doing that now? Not at all. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes, it's live.
And so when the course is actually mastered and all you know, the software is kind of put together, basically how it's presented is you'll solo for a chorus or two choruses, yeah. and then you'll comp, and the student solos for a chorus or two, and then you guys trade solos back and forth. Exactly. Um, but what you know, I found um, you know, on the other side of the glass wa watching you know, not only what you were doing is the insight on the rhythm and comping mm -hmm. is as valuable, I, I think, for us as the insight you're providing on some of your lines. And, uh -huh. you know, Robin is an improviser, okay? So, you know, he's not really a licks player, um, right. but we forced him, <laughs> okay? We made him listen to his recordings. To, to show us, recreate some of the lines so that you guys could really nail it. And I guarantee you there's plenty of good stuff in there for, for all of us to dig into. Um, Robin, we're now, we're almost up to 800 people online from all over the world. It always blows my mind. Uh -huh. um, we've got uh, Belfast, uh, India, West Indies, Slovenia, Argentina, Norway, Serbia, Antarctica. Yeah, Yay, we've he's hit here. Every hey. He's here. Uh, Thanks for coming. You know, Hawaii, Kentucky, Romania, Japan, Belgium, Alabama, Texas, Netherlands, Nashville, mm -hmm. uh, which is where you're living now it and producing out of, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Cool. Lithuania and Seattle. And <laughs> I think um, it's, you know, I mean, it's very apparent. Uh, you've got fans all over the world, man. You know, mm -hmm. fans that really love what you do, that... Um, uh, you've been a guitar hero. I mean, myself included. You know, it's a dream come yeah. true to get to work with you. you oh, know? thank you. And uh, I, I think that's just, you know, an, an awesome thing. And I, I think it's awesome that we have these technologies where we can kind of all get together and do a thing like this, you know? Pretty amazing. Um, so before we start answering some of the questions and you know there's a lot of questions there okay can we do another track show them the comping sure. and mm -hmm. maybe then show them how you would improvise over that okay tommy what what do you have next okie dokie so i'm gonna comp comp for first a bit yeah and then okay. we'll run the comping track that you can play yeah solo over cool should we run the whole thing play through the whole thing or maybe um, just a few bar, uh, you courses? You can, you know, a couple courses maybe, and then we'll roll the other track. Cool? Good. Let's just go right into soloing over the comp track, mm -hmm. maybe a chorus or two, whatever you feel. Sure. I'm ready. As I'll ever be. You, <laughs> you're always ready, man. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, a couple of questions from yeah. the audience. Uh huh. Um, LVPG first says Purple House, the latest album, is awesome. Thank you. He respects how you're always expanding your writing style. Thank you. And, and I know you love uh, songwriting and the craft of that. We'll, I do. We'll, we'll talk about Purple House in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, but then he asks, you know, are you running the diminished scale over the five chord um, in a one, four, five progression? And can you blend this with a mixolydian over the one? Uh... <clears throat> blend it with mixolydian over the one so uh hmm i mean i certainly use the diminished scale you know playing over over a five chord a lot uh they are different scales you know they're not the same scale so uh to play the uh yeah, that minor major seven kind of hints at a five chord. So I think that's what you're talking about. It kind of hints at a five chord. But it's... That's a very different scale. So, uh, I mean, I do have a tendency to run things together. And it is something that... It's completely acceptable as long as you're doing it in a musical way. So I wouldn't be afraid to do such a thing, but I would have to sit down and really think about it and look at it before I could say much more about that. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I can, you know, I, I'm allowed to be a little gratuitous uh, advertising. You know, I know I've been to so many of your clinics, and you get the question about the diminished scale all the time. You know? Sure. Um, and that's why we did that course together, mm -hmm. uh, Solo Revolution Diminished. Mm -hmm. and, and I can tell you with, you know, yep, it's a little bit gratuitous advertising, but you do answer a lot of questions about your use of the diminished scales and some of the other scales in, mm -hmm. in that course. Yeah, you know? yeah, um, it's definitely there. Certainly there. <laughs> In, in great detail. Um, another question, this one from Usman. Uh, what is your approach for soloing over the chord changes in a 12-bar jazz blues progression? Same. <laughs> it's all the same for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, a more traditional uh, blues, there's a tendency to play fewer notes. You know, there just is, because it's sort of like you kind of respect the style that you're in. You play to the style that you're in. And if the style is one that um, is really more about a sound and a feel and a rhythm than notes, then, you know, you, you play to that. If you're playing in an, an, an Albert King tune, you know, you don't really want to play a lot of bebop. So I would say uh, it's, it's just a matter of kind of respecting and playing to the style that you're in. Uh, one of the reasons why I write in my own music is so that I can I can dictate that you know I can dictate where my guitar playing is going to go because I I set the table you know and um, that was uh, something that you know playing in a traditional blues format uh, a lot of Chicago blues um, you know I, I, there was a tendency to play you know a lot simpler so I started writing things that brought you know. Uh, a little broader perspective into the music, and that's why, you know, I've kind of, I'm known as a guy who, you know, kind of walks that line of jazz and blues, you know. I did that first by playing a lot of um, traditional music and listening to a lot of very untraditional music and putting those things together in my own style. One of, uh, I remember the very first project we did together was called Blues Revolution, mm -hmm. right? And we covered a lot of topics. It was a very kind of horizontally oriented course. We didn't go too deep into anything, but we covered a lot of different topics. Uh -huh. And one of the things, uh, one of the lessons that got, you know, particularly wide feedback was, you know, you'd said something about learn your pentatonics all over the neck. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, go for it. 
just don't hit any wrong notes, you know? Yeah. And very liberating because, you know, it wasn't like, well, you do this and then you do that and then you do this thing over here. You know, you just yeah. kind of go for it, right? Yeah. Um, and I just want to read you one of your, you know, widely circulated quotes that, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know I particularly dig it as well. Uh, don't, <laughs> this really is live, live. isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I get a mulligan too, right? Sure. Uh, don't be afraid to screw up, you say. One of the key issues to learning is making mistakes. If you're mm -hmm. not making mistakes, you're probably not having a very good time. All right. Talk, talk about that just a little bit. Well, um, it, it's, it again has been so uh, included in the traditions of blues and jazz to make mistakes. You know, in classical music, don't even show up, <laughs> you know, if you're not going to play it exactly right. I mean, it's a very exacting tradition, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, so it's one of the great beauties, you know, uh, of blues and jazz. And, um, you know, a lot of jazz players also will be extremely deliberate in the way that they play. If you listen to Sonny Rollins, anything might happen, you know. And Sonny, honestly, is probably the greatest improviser in the history of, uh, of jazz. Mm. Uh, Charlie Parker, uh, before him, um, from the other side of the spectrum, Charlie Parker, you don't really hear mistakes in Charlie Parker's music, and yet he was swinging and joyful, you know? So the combination of those two things, for one thing, is kind of hard to find. Dexter Gordon... Uh, a lot of people have been kind of capable of that, but my favorite players, by far, uh, their, their playing is flawed, you know? It's deliberately flawed, though. It's allowed to be flawed because they want to be spontaneous. And, you know, in order to be spontaneous, you have to be allowed to make mistakes, you know? You might even offend somebody. <laughs> 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 but you have to allow that kind of freedom, you know, to... Uh, um, to find new things on the spot. Otherwise, basically, you're playing what you know how to play where you know how to play it. And so that's something I, I was never comfortable with. I was just never comfortable with, I'll say, well, yep, I'm playing that. And, yep, it goes right there mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, I was drawn to people like Sonny Rollins. I was drawn to people like Roland Kirk, um, mm. Archie Shep is a huge influence for me, you know. John Coltrane was one of those people who kind of put it all together. You know, he was very much, uh, uh, he, he seemed to like to know what it was he was playing, you know. And he had places he knew that he wanted to go, and he would, he would work his way to those places. Very practiced musician, you know, a very practiced musician, a steady musician. But so is, a, you know, Sonny Rollins. Sonny Rollins just sort of took the roof off, you know? Mm. And again, I, tr I like to take the roof off. I like to kick off my shoes, you know? And I mean, how serious can we be about this, you know? With right. Without, you know, being a little uptight. <laughs> 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 right. So, again, blues, rhythm and blues, you yeah. know? It's people music, you know? Nice. Want to play another track? Well, let's sure. pull one from... Uh, the other edition is on, uh, you call it Moody Blues. You know, they're yeah, all slow. Yeah, Moods of Blues. Moods we of call blues. it Moody Blues, yeah. yeah. But it's like, you know, different moods as yeah. opposed to di different tempos per se. Let's, let's comp over one of those tracks and then improvise okay. over it as well. All right. Tommy, what do you got? Uh, I have mud. I have mud. <laughs> mud it is. As in muddy waters. <laughs> Thank you. 
Moody. <laughs> um, uh, quick side note, I- I- Andy Timmons is on our chat and tuned ah, in. Nice. And uh, says that he... Great guitar player. He is a great guitar player and a, a great cat all around. A true fire artist. He's been in here a few times. Mm-hmm. He's coming back soon. Um, and he says Purple House is brilliant. You, you Andy. You, yeah. Merci. <laughs> He's getting, um, you're, you're getting, I mean, Purple House is getting uh, terrific reviews. Let's, I, I usually save that for last, but uh-huh. just talk about Purple House a minute because it really is, people well, are really talking it up. So this is my, my new latest CD, Purple House, and uh, so-called because it was recorded in a Purple House. And, um, you know, uh, it is always interesting to make a record because for me, ev- every record I've ever done has been different from the one before it. There are no two records I've ever done that sound like the, uh, another one, which I don't know if that's intentional or not, quite honestly. I just kind of go where the music is at that time, you know? Uh, even the Blue Line records, we did three of them. They're all completely different records, different sounding records. And... Um, so uh, the uh, songwriting thing I- is what I think sets the tone, you know? I mean, you're, you have to have material to record, and here's a song, and how is that song going to go? You know, you kind of discover it. You don't, you know, how it's going to wind up sounding in the end uh, is not something that's necessarily apparent when you write the song, you know? And I wrote most of this record, if not all of it, sitting on my couch um, with an acoustic guitar. And yet it's a quite rocking, you know, album in the final analysis. Mm-hmm. So uh, the songs really mattered. Uh, I, I certainly took my time writing. And uh, when we went into the studio to work, there were a variety of things that were affecting the outcome. One, of course, is the musicians you're working with. Secondly, the room you're working in. And so the way in which we recorded, because of where we were, changed a lot of things for me, Mm. Uh, both the way I played and the way I sound. So a lot of moving parts, Mm -hmm. you know? So consequently, that's a very good reason why this record turned out differently. It wasn't done as I normally do, which is go into a great studio, have a live band, got the Dumble amplifier, I'm playing, you know? Mm -hmm. And then maybe I'll redo the solo later, or maybe not. So uh, this was done over a a longer period of time, and, uh, you know, like, entire tracks would change, you know? Instruments would be removed and replaced with an existing track, things like that, or taken out completely, you know? A lot went into the making of this record. It was a very uh, uh, intentionally thoughtful album without getting too thinky, you know? Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound thinky, but it's... (laughs) You, there's a lot going on, man, you know? Yeah. And the music, you know, is uh, is new. Yeah, I would well, say. fans and critics alike are majorly digging it. So, you know, here's to Purple House, right? Thank you. Um, you're also doing a lot of producing. You, you have a label, your own label now. Yeah. And uh, just released a, a project uh, now uh, with Jeff McElane, who yeah. is also a true fire artist. Indeed. Actually one of the first artists we've ever worked with. Also a very dear friend of... And I met him know, here with you. Us. Yep, you did. And he's a you know big fan of yours, you know. Um, talk about that album a little bit. It, it, mm-hmm. Now is the name of it. Yeah, now Jeff McElane. Uh The label is 13J Records. So uh, just released today, and 13J just went up, really, you know, on, uh, on my website. Uh, we, uh, we cut the record in Nashville. Jeff and I, we've known each other since my first trip to True Fire. Mm-hmm. That's where he and I met. And we became good friends. He's been out on the road with me. He was very helpful in doing a couple of my choruses here. And a wonderful guitar player. And we've been doing uh, my uh, annual guitar camp in the Catskills together. And uh, I just said, hey, man, why don't we do something together? Mm -hmm. And he he liked the idea. I told him about my label. And 
uh, what do you say? You know, I'll produce a record on you on my label. Mm -hmm. And um, so indeed we did. And we cut it here in Nashville with a great Nashville rhythm section mm -hmm. in a beautiful Nashville studio. Yeah. And uh, Jeff came back a little later to do uh, overdubs mm -hmm. and then did some overdubs in New York. Mm hmm and uh, came down for the final mixing sessions here as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, uh, you know, it was intentionally an instrumental album. You know, I'm playing on it as well, mm -hmm. second guitarist, and I solo on it and everything. And um, there's also two tracks with a wonderful singer named, uh, uh, you know, we're only recently acquainted, Kendra Shen. I like not remember her last name, Chantrell. Kendra Chantrell? There I you think. Go. <laughs> Sorry, Kendra. <laughs> but um, a badass uh, singer who was uh, an American Idol finalist uh, and did the American Idol thing for about three years. So, um, very proud of the record. Jeff just sounds fantastic yeah, on it. Yeah, he really does. And it, just just a great all-around record and a great record for, you know, not just fans of you and fans of Jeff, but it's, it's great music. I mean, mm -hmm. you guys did a fantastic job. And, yeah, thank you. You know, there's a lot of mutual respect there. And just, you know, yeah. he, he's a terrific guy all around, too, isn't he? Indeed. You, you've had him, uh, you guys have done workshops together. You've taken him on the road together. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a great relationship. And, of course, we feel very proud that, you know, kind of sparked here. At Started Fire, right here, for you know? sure. Um, Jeff is online now, so shout out to him hey, as well. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> Kendra Chantel, right? <laughs> Chantel? I'm sure. What? Here it is. Yep, Chantel. Yeah. Kendra Chantel. I said it right the first time. I there was, you go. I was nervous. All right, so that was interstitial between the comping for Mud and the soloing, which would you do a chorus or two yeah. over that yes. track? Mm hmm. Play some blues. Tommy? That's from the Moody edition. Um, by the way, uh, we're running a, uh, a giveaway thing with 25 of those now records. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff uh, signed uh, 25 of them. We've got a page here. We're going to put it up in chat. Yeah, and, I just signed them. Um, oh, you signed them as well? There mm -hmm. you go. Two signatures. Yeah. And uh, also, the record, I think, is available at CD Baby. Yes. Right? That's the place to go. Pick it up, support the cause. It's it's well worth it. Um, so a couple more questions. Yeah. From the audience. I'm ready. All right. Um, what underflute asks 
you know, what's your daily practice schedule, if you even have one? Uh huh. And uh, what are you working on improving this week? Uh huh. Well, I I must confess I don't have a daily practice schedule. And uh, for me, um, it's uh, practicing and playing are kind of the same thing, you know, even on the bandstand. I'm always uh, searching, you know. But um, a big part of that has had to do with my lifestyle, my schedule, uh, a lot of travel. And uh, I did not grow up like uh, many of my contemporaries having gotten an education, having studied, having had teachers. And the, the probably greatest advantage of having that kind of a background is you learn how to learn. I never learned how to learn <laughs> in the way that, uh, you know, uh, is traditional, you know. Learning on the bandstand has its pros and its cons, and there's a lot of things that uh, I have not developed that... Uh, had I just had a little bit more discipline in my background, you know, it, it, w it would have been different. Um, I've been more of an experiential guy. And um, so a friend of mine, a great musician, once said, yeah, guys who are self-taught, he goes, I've noticed they have a lot of holes in their playing. <laughs> <laughs> this is my friend <laughs> says this to me, <laughs> and uh, what he meant by that, I totally understood, you know, which was like, you know, I, I have that, and then there's this hole. <laughs> so well, I don't have all of that, you know. It's like, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, this is good, <laughs> you know. So it's kind of pieced together, you know. It's a style that's sort of pieced together, um. And uh, the, one of the reasons why I've stuck close to uh, simpler forms of music, you know, that's uh, the blues for me. Uh, it allows me time and space to think about what I'm doing, and so it evolves a little bit more on the spot, you know. Um, so, no practice routine, never really had one. I used to practice a little bit more, uh, but that was when I was really kind of learning my basic scales, you know, practicing back and forth, picking technique, and uh, on on a daily basis. But I didn't put a lot of time into that, and I was always leaning more into writing. You know, like writing a song, mm -hmm. music, instrumental music, mm -hmm. certainly in those days. So, um, but currently, I am uh, actually spending a little bit more time doing a little bit more formal practice. And uh, what I do is take the things that I already have developed and try to take them a little bit further. I still work on the diminished scale. It's an incredible resource. There's so much that can be done there. And um, I just sit with the guitar and I, I play a little bit and I try a little thing here and there and see how I can extend it. You know, So I'm doing it all on my own, and I always have. Um, don't necessarily recommend it. You know, you can learn a lot <laughs> faster <laughs> with teachers, you know. So uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it, there you <laughs> as <go>. they say. <laughs> um, Chris, Chris asks, can you give some tips on how to think about, you know, building your solo? Like when you, how do you craft your solos? Are, are you thinking, <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> well, I mean... We have a lot of courses in that. Yes, we do. Because <laughs> uh, uh, to, to talk about it, you can't really say it exactly in a situation like this. There's just not time. But fundamentally, I can say I always start simply. I never start, bam, you know, like a bat out of hell. I start simply, and I ramp up, you know. And I take a small idea, and I try to develop it. Uh, so I'm very thematic in the way that I play. Theme, development, new theme, development, new theme, development, new theme, development, you know? It's not a lengthy development of one theme, you know? And uh, it's, ju it's just the way that I play, you know, because I'm kind of a melodic player. I'm not a lick player per se. 
So I, I like to take a small thing and then develop it. And the way you're able to do that is by knowing the fretboard, knowing where you are at all times. This is more important than the other concepts, is knowing the fretboard. You know, know where you are. Because if I know that, if I hit an F sharp, I know what a B sounds like. If I hit an F sharp, I know what a B sounds like immediately. It's a fourth up, you know. So that is super important. And that's why one of the first things I always tell people is you learn how to play the pentatonic scale, you know, but learn how to play it all over the fretboard of the guitar, you know. <laughs> right? Those same notes are in like four different places on the instrument. So you should be able to do that all over the fretboard of the guitar and certainly in all keys with the pentatonic scale. If you can do it in E and F, you can do it in all keys. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. So it's man. not too much to ask of yourself. But again, that's all in the spirit of um, learning the fretboard of the guitar. You know, Knowing that if I'm hitting that note, I know what that note sounds like. Let's, we are, man, there are so many questions, and I'm sorry we can't answer them all. Um, but I think what we should do is maybe hit a couple more of the tracks mm -hmm. and give people a taste for the latest okay. uh, project, which is, again, phenomenal insight. Um, it's not, to, uh, not only fun to do the training solos thing with Robin Ford, but there's uh, incredible insight on comping and rhythm guitar as well as you know some of your soloing approaches as well mm -hmm. tommy what do we have uh ready to go uh we have the moon the moon track okay good, good for you yeah good for me all right well, how about doing the comping thing first and then we'll solo over it okie doke <laughs> Roll the comping track and okay. do a chorus or two. Alrighty. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Thanks, man. Sure. So um, we're running out of time. I know you have to finish up the projects here, mm -hmm. but I, I have to read you one more comment, and there are dozens like this. This is from Sion Michelle. Mm -hmm. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Class Act thanks us for the live sessions. And for you, he says, Robin is such a gentle, free spirit, badass rocker. <laughs> um, love him to death. Purple House is a gem. Ah, so thank you so you know, much. I, I have to plug that Purple House again. It really is, you know, it's thank a you. great piece of work, man. And it's awesome to see, you know, the evolution, the revolution mm -hmm. of Robin Ford, you know? Right on. Thank um, you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We really, really appreciate your support from all over the world. You know, it's like every time zone. You know, it's the middle of the night in some of these it's places. Incredible. It's breakfast. What it's are you at doing the up? Office. Yeah, what are you doing <laughs> up? Um, let's pick a track and just play us out, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, Tommy? Did we have got? that shuffle or something? You want to do the C shuffle? Sure. C shuffle, and thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time, and thank you, Robin. My pleasure. Thank you, Brad.